Bishop and Eddie Lampkin are going to jump it up. Texas coming in at 21 and 10, 10 and 8 in league play. TCU looking for win number 20 and 8 and 10 in the Big 12. And Marcus Carr brings it up number two in white for the Longhorns. First shot of the game, a quick one. Andrew Jones off the mark. And here comes number one for TCU, Mike Miles. TCU's lineups, a couple of all Big 12 honorees in there, including Mike Miles, Damian Baugh, and Emmanuel Miller. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Miles, leading scorer for the Horn Frogs, and he's going to have to make something go. Fires off a three. It's an air ball. Lampkin, the offensive rebound, but it's a shot clock violation. You know, one of the things that... You know, Texas does really well. They're going to be very aggressive, especially with Mike Miles when he has the ball. I thought in the, the matchup in Austin, Rich, I thought TCU did a nice job in that first half of being patient, playing deep into the shot clock. But you got to make sure you're getting a quality shot with that patience. Here's Courtney Rainey, three and white, gives it up to Timmy Allen. First team all Pac-12 a year ago, and he throws it away. Miller in transition comes up short. And he can't follow the shot. We've already seen TCU crash in the boards early. Well, it's the best offensive rebounding team in the Big 12. Jamie Dixon, a guy, you know, all of his teams, you are what you emphasize. And his team's going back to Pitt, and his teams here at TCU have always been good on the glass. The, the, the odd thing, Rich, is Texas has dominated them in the offensive glass in the two matchups this year. Texas won both of those games against TCU in Austin as well as in Fort Worth. Gotta throw it to Lampkin. Here's Lampkin, two on the shot clock. No good. Emmanuel Miller gets it back. O'Bannon's first shot goes down, and that's a good sign for them because he struggled lately yeah, from the and, field. And it starts with a post touch. Like, if, if Eddie Lampkin has somebody on his back, you've got to throw him the basketball. Ramey answers with a jumper. Well, Texas has dominated the recent series history with the Horned Frogs, winning seven straight and 24 of the last 31. Both teams still seemingly in the feeling out process right here in Kansas City. Here's Bob, guarded by Ramey, five to shoot. And Bishop snares the rebound for Texas. Marcus Carr, an all Big Ten performer with Minnesota a season ago. Now Carr's first shot. It's off the mark. The rebound on the weak side to Miller. Going to take a collective effort on the glass. A really good snatch of a rebound by Emmanuel Miller. There's two guys. Yeah, punched away by Bishop out of bounds. Yeah. It'll stay to TCU basketball. The goal, Rich, for this Texas defense is to, to get the ball out of Mike Miles' hand. Hands. He has two of them. And that's why, you know, I said at the top, there's got to be some other guys who are willing to score the basketball to take some of that pressure off of Miles for TCU. Who do you think that would be? You know, it's been a combination of guys. Damian Ball has, can be that guy. Micah Peavy was good in the last matchup between these two. A second shot clock violation in just the first three-plus minutes. And you could see that Jamie Dixon is perplexed on the sidelines. As good as Jamie Dixon's teams usually are at rebounding, he also loves sharing the basketball. Normally, a high assist team under Jamie Dixon. Well, and their problem this year, Rich, has been turnovers. I mean, they are, particularly in the games against Texas, they've got 30 turnovers in those two games, and it's been a real issue all year. Here's Bishop. You'll see a lot of motion offense from the Texas Longhorns. But now Carr's trying to go one-on-one -on, -one on Miles. Good hands by Francisco Farabello, who's just checked in. Miles spots up. 
Triple try, no good, and Ramey's got it for the Horns. Nice bounce pass, and the one more, Andrew Jones for three. Mm. He's got that wrap on his right hand, got bitten by his dog Bella, a German Shepherd, but showing no ill effects from that. And he's been ice cold. You know, has not shot it well in their last four games. And, and I think in this game, if you've got the opportunity to score quickly, to score early in transition, I think that's a big deal in this game. Let's go to Chris Budden for more. So the dog bite happened Friday night before they went over to Kansas. One o'clock in the morning, Andrew's putting his dog to bed, bites the palm of the right shooting hand. It didn't involve any stitches, but when we watched him play Saturday, you could see the blood still coming through the bandage. Something to keep an eye on. We talked to Andrew yesterday, and he said he feels just fine. Askew's checked in the game. The backup point guard for Chris Beard and the Longhorns. An early 5-2 Texas lead. Almost five minutes gone by. A typically slow start on offense for both of these teams. Defense rules the day in the Big 12. Four to shoot. Here's Micah Peavy. Goes baseline. Gets it up. It's no good, and Chance Moore says we have a foul and we're going the other way. 15-14 to go. Both teams struggling offensively. Both teams stout on the defensive end. ESPN and Joe Lenardi, our resident bracketologist, projecting six teams going to the big dance. But we have some big news inside the Big 12 that just happened about an hour ago. Bruce Weber resigning from K-State. Yeah, look, you won't find a better man in coaching than Bruce Weber. The reality is we all work at the behest of employers. It's a bottom line business. And I give Bruce Weber a lot of credit saying, look, let me step aside and, and leave this to the next person. It's not an easy job. I mean, Kansas State is not an easy job. And I think he did a really nice job in his 10 seasons there. And if you got a chance to listen to his six minute post game press conference last night, if you know Bruce Weber at all, it sounds now in hindsight like he had something in mind when he was speaking to the media. And if so, he went out on his own terms. Texas. Off the window, that's Marcus Carr with his first two. He had 19 against TCU in the regular season. That's too easy. I mean, a nice job by Carr keeping his dribble off of the ball screen and just a straight line drive. Chris, what impresses you most about the Texas defense that's been ranked so high all year? How connected they are. And it, you know, it was a process because you get a lot of new faces. But they play hard. They're really connected in their rotation. You know, you're going to see a lot of similarities between this defense, obviously, and the way Texas Tech plays. Keeping the ball on one side. Guys really activated on the weak side. I mean, look at the numbers that they've put up this year. And again, there's been a lot demanded defensively of a lot of guys who came to Texas for the first time who have not been had that asked of them defensively at their previous spots. That's a great point. Marcus Carr, Timmy Allen are two that come to mind in that respect. Here's Brock Cunningham, first action of the game. Andrew Jones, a lifelong Longhorn. Three to shoot. Cunningham, nowhere to go with Lampkin in front of him. Yeah, and that's it? a shot clock violation that Jamie Dixon fired up on the sideline. You know, I'll tell you what, Eddie Lampkin... He's a remarkable story. I mean, I, you know, we've told the story throughout the year, what he weighed when he got in to, to TCU. He is starting to really move his feet well. I mean, that was a perfect example. Cut off the baseline. He's going to be a terrific player. I'm telling you, the upside on Eddie Lampkin is really high. He was on campus last year, but still considered a freshman because of the COVID year. 6'11". And now under 300 pounds. Came in to Fort Worth weighing 330. And he's a big energy giver for this team. Here's Ball from the corner. Yes, sir. TCU offense finally getting on track. So that three bink brings the Horn Frogs to within two. 13-20 to go in the first half of this first quarter final. 
wall-to-wall -wall basketball from the T-Mobile Center in the Big 12. Here's Dylan DeSue, another transfer from Vanderbilt. Nowhere to go. Lampkin. And he turns it over. Lampkin again. Here's Miles. Still hasn't gotten in the scoring column, but TCU does what TCU does. It's a big part of their offense, and it came off an early shot. And those guys are so trained. You know, Miller, their leading rebounder. Those guys are so trained, Rich, when that shot goes up, and especially early because the defense is unsettled. You don't have blockout responsibility early in the possession. Miller just kind of sneaks in there off of that mile shot. And they get inside position. Look at Lampkin blocking out. Miller's got inside position and goes right through Ramey's face on the finish. This TCU team, maybe to some who haven't seen them all year, a bit of an enigma. They were, they were picked way at the bottom in the preseason of the Big 12, but they finished fifth, tied for fifth. That's their best finish ever in Big 12 play. And Joe Lenardi says they are in. Right now they're an eight seed in the NCAA tournament. That foul's gonna go on Xavier Cork, number 12 in purple. And now Christian Bishop will step to the line. Well, as we mentioned, this is game one of four consecutive games from the T-Mobile Center in Kansas City. Bishop misses on his first free throw attempt. Four games over eight hours of some of the best college basketball in the nation right here on ESPN and company. Five of the eight teams that you will see today are safely in the NCAA tournament, including the two that we're talking about right now. And head coaching combined wins over 3,100 of them. Jamie Dixon's got 443 of his own from his time at Pitt and now at his alma mater, TCU. Here's Ba. And now they switch on Ba. High hedge from Bishop. Leaves Lampkin one on one. And he had it stripped, but got it back. Eddie Lampkin's got his first two. Big body. That's a lot of meat under there, and he's got a really good pair of hands. Those bear claws just snatching that thing from the ground. Nimble feet, soft hands, you love it from the 6'11", Eddie Lampkin. And another Texas turnover. Here's Miller. Out to Miles. Baseline three is short. And TCU's up two with their top scorer yet to be in the scoring column. High off the glass, Timmy Allen, no. In transition, Miller hangs and can't hit, and Emmanuel Miller will go to the line after a timeout on the floor. 11.36 to go. When we come back, Chris Budden introduces us to a YouTube ball handling star. We'll have you that, guys. Over 4 million. He joked that it's been a few years since he's gone back to watch himself play. Good stuff, Chris. That's almost as popular as a Chris Spatola. YouTube video. <laughs> Not sure about that. But you might have noticed that Mike was wearing a Titans jersey as a fourth grader. He's part of that Dallas Texas Titans AAU program that also produced Kate Cunningham and former Oklahoma State Cowboy or current Oklahoma State Cowboy Rondell Walker. The Metroplex. Well represented. Nine seven TCU lead. Miles on the bench now. Back door. Jones. Ramey turned it over. Defense has been dominant on both ends of the floor in the first nine minutes of this one. Well, Eddie Lampkin's been a big part of that. Damian Ball's got his second triple of the afternoon. You like to see that again. You know TCU early in this game, Rich. They're getting some balanced scoring. Well, Mike Miles has not scored yet. Other guys have, have really been active and contributed early here. A 10-0 Horn Frogs run. Puts them in front by five. 
Here's Ramey. He can shoot it from three. And he does. So Courtney Ramey's got his first triple. He was so good the other day in that Kansas loss in overtime. 18 points. And really, it was his defense on Ochai Abaji twice this year that has been fantastic. Inside Lampkin. Immediately double teamed. And he turns it over. Where Lampkin's got to take a dribble out. That'll come. Get out of that double team and, and make a clean pass. Another turnover. Texas has six. And TCU having trouble converting that defense to offense. Jacoby Coles now checking in for Lampkin. Be, give the big man a little breather. And Mike Miles set to check back in as well for Jamie Dixon. TCU coming in, losers of their last two games in the regular season, but that was at Kansas and at West Virginia. You talked to Jamie Dixon about that like we did, and he said the team was almost out of gas having to play four games in about eight days. Yeah, you could see it in the West Virginia game. There was a malaise over this TCU team, a product of that finishing schedule. Offensive rebound again, and they can't pay it off again. Here's Bishop underneath with the left hand. That can't happen. I mean, Jacoby Coles was back there, and, and the ball was just thrown over his head. Nice job by Bishop beating that TCU defense down the floor. Christian Bishop now 15 for his last 21 from the field, dating back to the last four games. Coming up on nine minutes to go in the first half. A defensive dominated first half between TCU Pass. and Texas. And Micah Peavy, the sophomore transfer from Texas Tech, gets his first two. And a really smart decision by Miles. He had a shot at the foul line and they decided to give Peavy a bucket. They work it inside. Bishop again off the window. You know, Lampkin being on the bench has been a difference maker for Texas. Lampkin's been so active. I think his size has clogged up the paint a little bit. It's been a lot easier to score for Texas with him off the floor. Here's Coles getting some early burn from Jamie Dixon. Eight to shoot. No look back door. Maybe not what you want to dial up against this ferocious Texas defense. Allen. Spin move on Farabello gets it to go. First two for Timmy Allen. And a timeout on the floor, 8.02 to go. It's a really nice decision. You get a high percentage shot there from and Syracuse. It's up and playing without ACC top scorer Buddy Beheim. Miami and Boston College, BC pulling off the upset against Wake Forest. A lot of great basketball still to come during Champ Week. As the great philosopher Jay-Z once said, Brooklyn, they go hard. <laughs> you know Biggie Smalls has his name up in the rafters. He he should, he along should. with Jay-Z. No. Both of them do. Hove. It was all a dream, Chris Spatola. Because you used to read Word Up magazine. We got a tie ball game here in the first of four quarterfinals. With seven and a half to go in the first half. Offense at a premium between two of the better defenses in the league. And we're going the other way. Jerry Pollard calling the foul. You know, TCU's got nine offensive rebounds, Rich. They only have four second chance points. The inability to finish is really why this game is tied. They have seven points off six Texas turnovers and... That's essentially why we have ourselves a tie ball game. Here's Chuck O'Bannon. Miles. 
met as he drove baseline. No whistle. Here comes Askew with the ball for the horns. The one more, Askew. Doesn't shoot it a lot, but he's got a triple there. Just his eighth of the season. Some scoring from unexpected sources in the first half of this first half. Askew whistled for the foul, and Marcus Carr is going to check back in. Well, and it's so important this time of year. I mean, in this league, every team's seen each other twice, and, and locking up the other team's best players is, is, you know, teams are so schooled on that by at this point. And so, really, tournament time, man, you need those, those other guys to, to be able to contribute, particularly offensively. PV double teamed on the elbow. Miller. Now Miles still can't find the range. He is 0 for 6 in the first half. What a defensive possession. They are so committed to not letting you get in the paint. Allen. Shoot it. Askew gets fouled, and Devin Askew will go to the line. You know, it's talking to Chris Beard yesterday. Like, I, I love his energy, and everything about him is, like, progressing to March. Like, you talked to him back in January, and it's about... We're, we are preparing to be at our best in March. And, and I think it's one of the reasons why he's been so good in the transfer portal, both at Texas Tech and here. Obviously a guy who's coached in a national championship game. You know, a couple bounces away from winning that national championship. I mean, this guy, it's all about it gearing towards March. And I think he's done a really a terrific job with this team this year. Well, this is a Texas team that won the Big 12 championship a year ago. But under the stewardship of Shaka Smart, they did not win a game in the NCAA tournament. And that would be unacceptable for a Chris Beard program. PV. Do they count it? Yes, they do. Transition's been good for TCU. And that look-ahead pass, that pitch ahead, you allow an athlete like PV to get out and run. He attacks the rim. And that's a good call. And a nice finish through the contact. What an athlete Micah Peavy is. Came over from Texas Tech. Native of Cibolo, Texas, where he was coached by his dad, David, who's the head coach at Duncanville High School in Texas. And last time I checked, they were top 10 in the nation in high school boys basketball. So he comes from good stock, averaging 6.3 a game this year. Looking for his fifth point already in this Big 12 championship quarterfinal. And he played a lot last year. He started 25 games for Chris Beard at Texas Tech. Peavy with seven over his season average already. And there's two by Timmy Allen. And that's his office. Anywhere around the basket. One big reason Timmy Allen came to Texas and to play for Chris Beard. He only won one postseason game in his career at Utah, and that was in the Pac-12 tournament. Chris, you talked to Timmy about that. Now he was sitting at home last year watching Texas Tech-West Virginia game where Chris Beard basically threw a tantrum, felt laid on the floor, was upset over a foul, and he watched that and said, that's the kind of guy that I want to play for. <laughs> that was an all-time rant. I did that game from my living room, but uh, an all-time rant for Chris Beard. That was against Bob Huggins, who we'll see coming up against Bill Self, West Virginia and Kansas in the second of four quarterfinals. Well, Saturday on ABC and the ESPN app, our NBA matchup featuring the Warriors and the Bucks from Mil or from Golden State. Our coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app.
Well, after an uneven start, the Texas offense has started to click. They've made their last six field goals and have a three-point lead. 22-19 with 440 to go. Allen, wow. he's heating up. He has six. And that's why their offense is starting to click. That was a tough shot because that was, you know, well defended. He had two very Timmy Allen-like games against these Horned Frogs in the regular season. 16 and 8, first time out, 17 and 7 in the rematch. Texas won them both. Ball working on Jones. The pull-up, no. And it's one and done for the Frogs. Here comes Ramey. Ramey takes it himself. Allen can't follow, but Timmy Allen will go to the line to shoot two. Timeout on the floor. The final media timeout of the first half with the fourth seed at Texas Longhorns up five on TCU. ESPN's exclusive. You know, part of where teams have scored, Rich, you see the numbers off of turnovers. You know, it's been these broken plays, and, and Texas has been better off of those broken plays. You know, TCU, nine offensive rebounds, just haven't been able to finish around the rim. And a, and a quiet half from, from Mike Miles, 0 for 6 from the field. He has got to get going. I mean, at the end of the day, he's their guy. Conversely, Timmy Allen, the leading scorer for... The Longhorns, he has seven, looking for eight points, and he's got it. Chris, you have more. Well, Chris Beard always puts a plan in place for an opposing team's leading score. He'll call them the Miles rules, or like we have seen against Kansas, the Ochai rules. Kind of a testament how people used to do the Jordan rules. There are two or three nuggets that he constantly reminds his teams in huddles. Execute the Miles rules. Well, Miles nearly turned it over and you see a couple of longhorns laying out on the floor for that 50 50 ball chris beard just like his counterpart jamie dixon coaching at his alma mater a 95 graduate at texas he was a ga for tom penders and his circuitous route brought him back to the 40 acres nice block by Allen out of bounds it stays TCU basketball that was a, that was a terrific block he, and he stayed with the play because ball had him beat I mean it was a really good offensive set nice curl cut and Allen just stays with the play that's a basket saving defensive play and look at Timmy Allen again working on ball 7 TCU turnovers in the first half largest lead of the game for the Longhorns Cunningham left alone and he adds to that lead it's 10 and Brock Cunningham's in the scoring column three minutes to go in the first half a 9-0 Texas run Peavy almost had an add one opportunity You know, Brock Cunningham, here's this screen. You got two guys who stay with the ball, and Cunningham wide open. You know, top of the key, and he doesn't shoot a lot of them, but he's actually shot a pretty good percentage. He's shooting 47% from three. Again, not a high volume, but you leave somebody wide open like that and a, and a good, good knockdown there. Chris Beard loves having him on the floor because he makes what the team calls Brock plays, hustle plays, the dirty work. But if they get scoring from him, that's gravy. And here's what Texas has done offensively. Is that typical of a Chris Beard team? Well, graphs were never my thing in school, so I'm <laughs> have a hard time determining exactly what we're saying there. But, yeah, I mean, look at the field goal percentage, and then they're getting a bulk of their, you know, their higher percentage in, in the paint, which you know, is kind of how things have gone for Texas all year. Marcus Carr with a hand in his face. And that's another three for the Texas Longhorns. In a game like this, that three-point line will open up scoring. It's crazy. Five different Longhorns have hit a three-pointer already in the first half. Ten to shoot for the Frogs. They're down by a dozen. Three on the clock. 
Miller from the wing. And again, a one and done possession on offense for TCU. Just have to work so hard to score against this Texas defense. Jace Febris gets in the act. Six Longhorns from beyond the arc. And then they bury you. I'll do respect to say this too, and this will take longer than uh, 10 seconds. No, but David McCormick has had two monster games yes. against West Virginia this year. It's been a real problem for West Virginia. Bob Huggins picking up career win number 916 last night in what amounted to a playing game in the Big 12 championship. Here's Miller. Another miss. Can't get it to go. Really struggling at close range, and Emmanuel Miller is very slow to get up. Adding injury to insult for the Frogs, who are down 15. And now they're down 18. Eight points for Courtney Ramey, his second three of the first half, and everything's working for the Horns right now. It's demoralizing if you're TCU, you've got a point-blank layup on one end that you miss, and they've missed a lot of them. And then Texas keeps raining threes. Six for their last six from downtown. And Miles still scoreless. So there's Emmanuel Miller. On the sideline now, honorable mention, all Big 12 getting checked out by TCU trainer Matt Harrell. And here's what happened to him. Tough to tell in yeah. that gaggle of legs that we saw underneath the basket. But he's getting his right leg worked on, and he's a key piece for this TCU team. They're going to need him in the second half as he hobbles to the locker room. Miles inbounds to Xavier Cork. Under a minute to go with six on the shot clock. Every shot for Mike Miles is a contested shot. Yeah, and, and everything is, is coming off a dribble. Like, the ball is not moving. And, and again, a, part of that's a product of Texas's defense. They just choke you off from running your stuff. But everything is coming off the dribble, and the degree of difficulty on a lot of these shots is really high, except for the layups they've had around the basket that they've also missed. TCU is 5 for 13 in that category. It's crushing. And then, you know, again, your opponents banging threes on the other end. It just takes your energy. And the ball is singing for the Longhorns. Ten points for Timmy Allen. Balanced scoring for these Longhorns. Ramey has eight. And the lead is 20 for Texas. And Mike Miles finally gets on the board. And a use it or lose it timeout called by Chris Beard and the Longhorns with 20.8 to go and the shot clock off. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. Don't go anywhere. The remainder of this first half quarterfinal after these and locking down on defense. They have an 18-point lead on five-seed TCU. And making threes is not something Texas has done all year. I mean, they're 30% as a team from three. They're shooting 64% from theirs. Made seven threes in this first half. On the season, they average 6.4 threes made a game. Five seconds to go in the half. Carr almost lost it. They got to get it up. And Brock Cunningham can't do that. But a first half that was dominated by the Texas Longhorns, 40 to 22 is the halftime score. Let's go to Chris Button with Chris Beard. Coach, you said pregame and then let up in the back half of that first. So we got to get back to being committed on the defensive end. Chris, big hill to climb down 18 for Jamie Dixon's 
TCU Horn Frogs. They control the second half ball in their road purple uniforms and immediately Mike Miles gets double teamed at half court and almost turns it over. Off of that double, they've got to be able to, they have numbers on the back end of that. You've got to be able to attack. Seven to shoot. They got Miles playing in reverse. I mean, they're just not creating offense off of that double team. You, you, you have numbers behind that. And again, Rich, I thought Texas did a much better job on the defensive glass. TCU had nine offensive rebounds the first 12 minutes of that first half. They had one the rest of the way. Here's Bishop. Tried to thread the needle back door to Ramey. It goes out of bounds. TCU ball. Well, if you're a coach and you're down 18, what do you tell your team in the locker room? It starts with stops. Yeah. You know, any sort of comeback starts with, with your defense. And then, you know, quality shots. I mean, that's where they had some in that first half, which we talked about their inability to finish around the rim. Baugh gets two feet in the paint and converts. That's a good sign. Here's Ramey. He had a stat sheet stuff in first half. Eight points, five boards, three dimes. Jones, short on that three ball. Here comes Ball. And Miles in transition. And that's a good way to get it going. You know, get some easy stuff out in the open floor. You don't have to play against that half-court defense. Now a trap in the corner by TCU. Carr with 10 on the shot clock. Offensive rebound, Bishop. And he goes back up with that file and will Big go time. to the free throw line. Big time rebound. And, you know, this was one bright spot in the first half when TCU, long rebound, able to get out and run. And then an athletic finish by Miles. We'll see if that gets him going. Give him a layup, something easy to look at. Just four points so far for Mike Miles. Fifth leading scorer in the Big 12 at 15.1 points per game. You know, he's had to work so hard all year, Rich, for his shots. I mean, every defensive game plan is geared to stop him, obviously. He just has to work so hard. Plays a lot of minutes. Now full court pressure from the Longhorns. Trying to keep the pedal to the metal against the Frogs. Lampkin. And he puts it up at an easy two for Eddie Lampkin. Well, just in these first two and a half minutes, TCU's offense looks better than it did all first half. Sure does. Blocked from behind by Lampkin. And the Frogs want to run. So does their defense. the window a foul called on Texas and Damian Ball will go to the free throw line you know Lampkin plays with such energy you know they're gonna stay with the ball nice roll to the front of the rim good finish there at the basket and here he is being active Eddie Lampkin yeah, I was I was talking to him before the game you know he had a brother his brother Tello died at the age of 22 from a gunshot Eddie listens to a song that Tello wrote he listens to the song before every game. And it's the only recording that Eddie has of his brother's voice. And I, I asked him before the game, I said, it's an amazing story. Is it a good song? And he said, yeah, it's, it's a really good song. He said, I, I get you, man. He goes, that could be kind of tedious, you know. He said, no, it's a good song, and it, it, it just is my constant reminder of my brother, Tello. And he's got such a great spirit about him, does Eddie Lampkin. A lot of that due to his late brother. 
So a 10-2 run has cut this 18-point halftime lead to just 12 now for the Longhorns. Ramey, pull up. Courtney Ramey in double digits with 10. What a job by Ramey. Man. You know, Ramey not included on the on the league's all defensive team, and there are a lot of guys you could have put on that list. Like I, I didn't have a whole lot of heartache on who was on and who was left off, but the job Courtney Ramey's done defensively has been outstanding, and he's a team defender. Like that last possession, a perfect example of an unselfish team defender. And I'm glad you mentioned that word unselfish because this grand chemistry experiment that was Chris Beard's first season in Austin. A guy like Courtney Ramey, who's been with the Longhorns forever, could have easily checked out and been like, all these transfers coming in, I'm out of here. But instead, he's bought in yeah, instead of has. checked out. Bishop swatted away by Lampkin. Here's Miles ahead of the pack. Ooh. And he tried for the throwdown. Mike Miles has some hops, but he gets fouled and will go to the line. After we come back from our break, 15-53 to go. TCU trying to hang around in the corner. Off the bus, getting ready for the second of four quarterfinals. Kansas, West Virginia coming up on ESPN at 3 Eastern. They will play the winner of this game, Texas TCU, the winner of Jayhawks and Mountaineers. That's coming up with myself, Chris Patola, Chris Budden on ESPN. But still 15.55 to go. And in this second half, Chris, it's kind of been the reverse of the first half. Texas shooting just one for six from the field. And TCU getting back in it, shooting three for four from the field. And now four for four from the strike. Ramey with six on the shot clock. Got his own rebound. Timmy Allen. No good. The rebound to Xavier Cork. Now Cork working in the low post on Bishop. Gets it to go. Nice move. Very nice. Xavier Cork. The transfer from Western Carolina. Yeah, played two seasons there. He's from the state of Texas, from Sulphur Springs. He's been much better in the second half of Big 12 play for them. Allen guarded by Emmanuel Miller. Good to see Miller, number two in purple, back on the floor after leaving in the first half with an injury. So good patience here. Recognizes he's got one-on-one, -on -one, uses that body. You know, playing in the post is about where you catch it and the angle you have. Worked himself two feet in the paint, took his time. Texas's largest lead in the first half was 20. TCU has whittled that down to just 11 right now. Five on the shot clock. Carr. And they have a chance to get it to single digits. Here's O'Bannon. Fouled on the three point attempt. That's the third foul on Jace Febris. Well, Chuck O'Bannon with two points in the first half steps to the line to shoot three free throws. The transfer from USC. And if you know the name O'Bannon, Chris Patola, as you do, you know there is basketball in his DNA. Yeah, there sure is. Two legends right now, uh, right there in their time at UCLA. You know, Charles O'Bannon, Chuck O'Bannon at the line just had a uh, he just had a birthday. He turned 23 on March 1st. He lives by himself, and he's got a Maltese Yorkie mix dog named Hitman. And I said, "You are living a lie, Chuck O'Bannon. <laughs> a Maltese Yorkie with a name like Hitman." 
Farabello off his hands out of bounds. It'll stay Texas basketball right in front of us. Here's Jones. Pull up. Got it. Andrew Jones with his first bucket of the second half. He has five. He had a stretch of games where he was play playing really, really well. He's been ice cold of late. You love here in March to get Andrew Jones back on fire. Yeah, had 21 earlier in the season against TCU, but just five so far in this contest. Our stage director, Patrick, stay, getting in the action. Stay ready. You don't got to get ready. Right on top of that one. Well, what's been better for TCU in the first six-plus minutes of the second half? I, I think their defense has been has been more active. You know, forced some tough shots, have led to long rebounds, and then, you know, they were able to get some transition stuff, Rich, to give them some easy looks at the basket. And a foul before the shot. You know, you, you can't understate, too, how much the three-point shot, the impact it had in that first half for Texas. You know, again, they were plus 15 from the three-point line in a low-scoring game, I and mean, that's a big deal. And in some ways, it flies in the face of what Chris Beard told us, especially this time of year. He said, our goal is to get to the free throw line more. And when you look at free throws right now, they're only five for eight. But that gets mitigated when you're shooting so well from three-point range. Here's the double. Miles has struggled with that all afternoon. Well, and he's not getting a lot of help. I mean, a lot. there's a lot of folks who could struggle with a double, especially a Texas double. O'Bannon. Can't follow his own miss. And Timmy Allen comes away with it. Here's Carr left alone, if only for a moment. And Allen in his office. When Lampkin has to go out and contest that shot, as he did on Carr, it means he's not under the basket. And a nice job carving out space on the offensive glass. Timmy Allen having another Timmy Allen type game. 12 points, 6 rebounds. He leads this Texas team in both categories. And Miller got an easy 2 under the basket off the assist from Damian Baugh. Easy for me to say, an easy 2. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a last second reaction. <laughs> Here's DeSue, showed 3. Aggressive to the hole, no whistle. Fresh 20 for the Horns. Carr with the pull-up game. Another offensive rebound. TCU did a nice job in the first half, but it has plagued TCU against Texas. Texas 29 offensive rebounds in the two games during the regular season. Marcus Carr, another one who only has two postseason victories in his collegiate career. Started at hit. Went to Minnesota, only won two conference tournament games before coming here. So the Horns are veterans, but they're hungry, and they're up 13. 68, Baylor and Kansas at this point sharing the one line. Texas Tech, a three seed. Texas and TCU both comfortably in alongside Iowa State. So six of the nine eligible Big 12 teams in. And listen, I think if you asked any of these programs, they would say their home crowds, Chris, are a big part of their success. Yeah, the, the, the Big 12 has the best collection of home environments in college basketball. And, and I've been on this push. Like, we need them. We need good home crowds in college basketball. Miles bangs down a tough one. Like, you turn on the TV, there's too many bad environments, arenas that are empty. And, and I think the Big 12 has done a nice job. It helps the sport. It helps recruiting. And it's it's a, it's a I think it's a real differentiator for this league. Chris Button. As someone who's been to all these crowds for huge games, the one that's been surprising this year has been down in Austin. We're not used to seeing people waiting outside, but when Texas Tech came to play there, 
They had, the students were there at 2 o'clock in the morning waiting to get into the door. So what Chris Beard has brought down in Austin this year, the fans, multiple sellouts in that building. Well, here's some of the Big 12's recent success in the Big Dance 2019. Chris Beard taking the Red Raiders all the way to the championship game. A lot of people felt like it was Kansas's tournament to lose before COVID canceled everything. And then Baylor followed that up last year with their first national championship. This year, six of the nine eligible teams in the Big 12 are heading to the Big Dance, according to Joe Lenardi. And by the way, Oklahoma State would have been another one. Yes, deservedly so. And while we've been chatting away, Chris Patola, Mike Miles is starting to get on track. He hit his first three of the contest earlier. Now he has two free throws. 12 points for Miles leads the TCU Horn Frogs, and they have it down to an eight point deficit against Texas. And Courtney Ramey answers with a bucket, giving him a dozen. Is that how you're describing what we're doing? Chatting away? This is analyzing, Rich. Full-fledged. Miles again! I mistakenly gave him a dozen earlier. He has 13 now. Two threes in the second half, and Mike Miles, welcome to the quarterfinals. Early layups in transition, I think, got him to see a bigger basket, and he's a guy who can get cooking. Thrown away. Here's Ball. Great transition defense and hands by Marcus Carr knocking it out of bounds. Yeah, I, he may have gotten fouled, but it was, it was a good hustle there by Carr. And, you know, just a really good... A little fade to that corner. Gave the defender a little bit of a shove to create the space. But that's a guy, you know, again, can really get going, can microwave it up. And I thought the layups early in this half helped. He scored the last eight points for the Frogs. A bucket here and things get really interesting. Damian Ball for three. There it is. 13 for Ball. An 11-2 TCU run. And all of a sudden, it's a four-point spread. Good hands by Peavy, slapping it away. Ramey short. Got his own miss. Blocked by Peavy. Now Peavy on the other end, and Mike Miles... Play stops right in front of us. Mike Miles is struggling. Looks like possibly the right leg for Mike Miles. Yeah, he's grabbing around his ankle. And here comes Matt Harrell to check him out. TCU team trainer. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> Inadvertent by Devin Askew, obviously. Nevertheless, Mike Miles hobbled with a right ankle. Needless to say, Chris, this would be disastrous for the TCU Horn Frogs who have worked so hard to cut into what was a 20 point Texas lead get it all the way down to four with still 9.08 to go in the game but their best player and leading scorer is wincing in pain right now you know every team has that guy that gives a team its swagger mike miles with the way he's played with the way he's played in this second half rich like he's given this team a swagger other guys start believing all right we can do this that did not look good one of two sophomores to earn Big 12 Player of the Week honors and the only player in the Big 12 in the top six in scoring and assists per game. And now Mike Miles is being helped to the locker room for TCU. Well, next man up.
who do you think in the flow of the game fills that void with Miles so hot in the second half? Well, it, look, other guys have put the ball in the basket. That's a foul. My goodness. No call. Transition. 50-50 ball. Lampkin's got it. I mean, how do you let that go? A collective groan from the crowd here in T-Mobile Center after that. TCU minus Mike Miles can make it a one-possession ball game. Miller working on the smaller askew, and the foul is called. Emmanuel Miller going to the line. I mean, this is egregious. That's a, that is a easy call. You know, you're asking about Miles. The other thing Miles does besides put the ball in the basket, Rich, he handles it. You know, his usage is so high, so it's it's not even just who's going to put the ball in the basket. It's who handles the basketball against this Texas defense for them. Emmanuel Miller. Makes it a three-point game. Averaging ten and a half a game, Miller held to just five, but he has seven rebounds so far today as Xavier Cork checks in for Lampkin. And it has been almost a complete reversal of fortune from the first half to the second half. Miller one for two, three-point ball game. Here's Carr working on Farabello. Bishop, offensive rebound, back out to Carr. Here's Jones. Can't knock down the three, and PB wants to push. Farabello transition three, no good. It's going to be Texas ball out of bounds. Just another game in the Big 12. Low scoring, closely contested. On the wheel play, Carr comes up short. I mean, there's something there, too. Like, I thought he got fouled. Emmanuel Miller, nice touch for the big man. Miller has seven. It's a one-point game. And Chris Beard wants to talk it over. He is fired up on the Texas sideline. But the Horde Frogs, the Frog Army, who've made their way to Kansas City are fired up. To the TCU bench, Chris Budden has more. Yeah, you see him being followed by his family members. They went out to go check on him. It is an ankle injury, but I am told he's questionable. They have not ruled out a possibility that he could return to this game. Chris, when you've tweaked your ankle in your playing days, was it important for you to stay on two feet and keep that warm? I am playing in a one-point game in a conference tournament. There is nothing keeping me off the floor, Rich. Well, and there's nothing is. keeping him. Let's yeah. go. He's working his way to the huddle as we have a timeout on the floor. 7.07 to go. One point game in Kansas City. Who knows, maybe we have a buzzer beater in this game between Texas and TCU. Either way, we've got you covered on Selection Sunday. Bracketology starts us off at 6 Eastern on ESPN. Recent the guys breaking down the NCAA men's field. Then coverage continues on ESPN and the Deuce with our March Madness women's selection show as we reveal the women's field of 68. And wouldn't you know it, just as you prescribed, Chris Patola, Mike Miles is back on the floor for the Frogs. And he stayed on his feet the entire time out, trying to keep that ankle loose. Count the bucket and the bump. And all of a sudden, TCU is back on top since the first time since they led 14-12. Tell you what, Emmanuel Miller's been a man. He has been a man on the interior. Gets his toughness from his mom. Emmanuel Miller's got four brothers. He's the second youngest. His dad passed away when he was five. His mom, Carlin, raised all five boys. 
And her son, Emmanuel Miller, has been a man in this second half. 9.7 boards for Emmanuel Miller and TCU on top. 53-52 with six and a half to go. Carr. Surrounded by purple. And the foul's going to go on Lampkin as Timmy Allen will go to the line. Just so hard to maneuver on the interior with both of these teams. That ball kind of snuck through there to Allen and a really nice shot fake. So Timmy Allen, who does it all for this Texas team, leads them in points and rebounds and steals. A 72% free throw shooter. Steps to the line. He's two for two today, now three for three. A game of momentum here in the first of four quarterfinals in the Big 12 championship. It was all Texas in the first half. They led by 18 at the break, but TCU has rested it away. And we are now tied at 53. An 11-1 TCU run over the course of the last four minutes. You know, Texas is going to have to find that defensive verb they had in the first half. I mean, there has been very little resistance coming out of halftime from this Texas defense. The winner of this game moves on to the semifinals to face the winner of one seed Kansas or West Virginia. Ball. Offensive tap by Lampkin doesn't go. Jones surveys out to Ramey. Offensive rebound, Allen. Blocked by Miller. Stood his ground. And TCU with a chance to go back on top. Five on the shot clock. And an offensive foul called. We're going the other way. So now substitutions coming on for Jamie Dixon, Micah Peavy, Xavier Cork are back on the floor. Farabello and Lampkin to the bench. Texas has only scored 14 points in the second half, Chris. What do they have to do differently to get things going offensively? You'd love to see Marcus Carr get going, first of all. I mean, he's been a no-show. And I thought they've settled for some shots, you know, some perimeter shots, Rich, that were going down in the first half. They have not gone down in the second half. Yeah, they're 0 for 7 from beyond the arc in the second half after knocking 7 down in the first half. Instead, they're intent to go inside and go back to the free throw line. Especially with Lampkin when he's not on the floor. That was a good interior pass to find Bishop. So Christian Bishop steps to the line. Six points on the afternoon to go along with seven rebounds for number 32 in white. Misses the first. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must-have for Big 12 fans. Softball and baseball seasons are in full swing. More than 200 matchups available, along with the early rounds of both conference tournaments. Plus, it's the home of over 600 live events and original content. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. Bishop 0 for 2 Big. from the line. Big misses. Texas normally very solid from the charity stripe. 75% as a team. That's best in the conference. You know, the foul line, Rich, was such a, it was such a factor in the game in Austin. 
Texas took 29 free throws in that game. They made 24. TCU's done a much better job keeping them off the line today. And it's been a, a steady run at the line for TCU. Damian Baugh, only a 66% free throw shooter. But he's 3 for 3 this afternoon. And if he goes 4 for 4, TCU's back on top. Baugh, 6-4 transfer from Memphis. Gives the Horn Frogs a one-point lead, counting down to four and a half to go. Mike Miles still on the floor with that bad right ankle. Timmy Allen calmly knocks down the two-pointer. The tough matchup for Lampkin, one-on-one. -on -one. When Allen's got it on the perimeter. A game-high 16 for Timmy Allen. Here's Miles with the ball. Pulls up, and he's short on that jumper. Kicked out of bounds by Micah Peavy. 3.36 to go. We've had seven ties and seven lead changes in Kansas City. Texas up one on TCU. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball. TCU, 55, a trip to the Big 12 Championship semifinals on the line. Mike Miles is on the bench right now for Jamie Dixon. And I mean that figuratively because he's standing on the sidelines, not sitting. Quick shot. In and out. Marcus, Here comes Ball. Marcus Carr just can't, he just can't get it going. And Jamie Dixon wants to talk it over. Might have seen a defense that he wasn't familiar with or wanted to get his offense straight every bucket is at a free your hair product in Huggy's <laughs> hair earlier this year we were joking with him you know he, he's had the goatee and he always has the quarter zip pullover he comes out and we're talking to him we go you shaved the goatee and you're wearing a full zip he said got to change the mojo around here they did last night got the win against K-State TCU has certainly changed the mojo in this game, down by just one. Coming up on three minutes to go. You know, it's interesting. Jamie Dixon may have called that timeout because he's only got one left. It was an interesting timeout he called. It may have been to get Mike Miles back on the floor. You know, maybe doing a little offense, defense. Although he stays on. It was an interesting timeout to call and a, a bad possession out of it. You're right. One point game over three minutes to go, and you only have one TO remaining. Dicey. Marcus Carr with the ball, held to just seven points and only two in the second half. There's Jones working with that bandage on his right hand. Out of the double team. Rainey got it for three. Big time. First three of the second half for the Longhorns. And a nice job playing off the ball screen. We got TCU in rotation. And Rainey found open space. Here's Miles. 11 second half points, 13 on the game. Out of the double team. Ooh, Rapkin with the throwdown. What a pass off that bum ankle. Playing out of the double team by Mike Miles. Really good poise. That's his third assist of the afternoon. Here's Carr. Float game. 
And he tries to chase down his own miss. It goes out of bounds. It's going to be TCU basketball. Eddie Lampkin was trying to bring down the basket stanchion. Yeah, Texas going to stay with two on Miles. And then the back end unreacts. You got two guys on the back end. And that's what I've been talking about all game is playing out of that double team behind it. And then Ramey with TCU in rotation, finding time and space. I don't know if you could be both of these things, but Lampkin is nimble and nasty at the same time. Two-point game, Carr whistled for the foul. That's third on Marcus Carr. You know, and you, it's a silly foul. You know, in a, in a one-possession game, you're up two. We got a minute and a half left. Force TCU to play against your half-court defense. You just give them a walk to the foul line by putting two hands on the ball handle. Now, TCU was a 68% free throw shooting team during the regular season, one of the worst in the Big 12. But in their last three games, Chris, they've upped that to 83% from the free throw line. So far today, they are 13 for 20. And Damian Baugh is 5 for 5. Make it 5 for 6, but he gets it back on the tap back. Miller blocked by Bishop. Lampkin picks it up. Big 12's best offensive rebounding team. Seven ties, eight lead changes now. Coming up on one minute to go and a one point game. Got a mismatch, Ramey on the big man Lampkin. Bishop waited. And got fouled. Emmanuel Miller kept his last possession alive with the tap out. I mean, just a, just a big time play right here. And then Lampkin ends up getting back on that offensive glass. In traffic, using that big body, clears his space. <laughs> and then look at the energy. The 6'11 freshman out of Houston, Eddie Lampkin. Has eight points today to go along with eight rebounds. And Christian Bishop, who struggled from the free throw line, knocks down the first one there. Farabello on, PV off. Now to your point, some offense for defense substituting by Jamie Dixon. One for two for Bishop. Tie ball game for the eighth time this afternoon. And you should get two more shots here if you're TCU in this game. That's and it. There's the final timeout. 41.9 to go. Ball got trapped right in front of his own bench, and Jamie Dixon had seen enough. So take us inside both of these huddles. And they'll inbounds with 41.9 left in the game and 11 on the shot clock. You're in the bonus, so drive it. If you got the opportunity to drive it, take it. Here's Ball. It's a Lampkin. They've got the lead. Eight-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Texas with the ball, down two. Carr, off, Lampkin, the rebound. And here's Farabello on the leak out. Wisely brings it back out, he and he gets fouled. Man, I was surprised they didn't foul Miles down at the other end. I, I think they were a little bit confused, perhaps hanging their heads for not scoring, but that you allowed a lot of time to come off that clock. What execution out of the timeout by competitive winning mentality out of Texas that that guy, that head coach, of course, has had teams that have displayed that. And the right guys at the free throw line for Jamie Dixon and the Frogs. Francisco Farabello, 89% from the free throw line, hits the first one. Still a one possession ball game. 
And Chris Beard uses one of his two remaining timeouts. Still one timeout who misses and fouls. It'll be a one and one opportunity for the Texas Longhorns. Again, Farabello, 89% from the free throw line. And he makes it. Huge free throw from Francisco Farabello, the junior from Argentina. Fifteen point nine to go. Texas has to hurry. Down by four. Jones for three. Short. Ball the rebound. And TCU has a chance to salt this one away at the free throw line. You know, they had a TCU had a brutal, a brutal finishing schedule. I think it helped them. Like, I, I, I think going through that schedule and the losses that they took during that period, you know, they showed a lot in the win over Kansas, finished the year with the two losses, Rich. But I thought they, it tested their medal the way they finished conference play, and I thought it showed up here in the second half. Damian Ball misses the first. Four point eight to go. A win and TCU advances to the Big 12 Championship semifinals for the second time in program history. Ball gets it. 17 points, a game high for Damian Baugh to go along with four assists. And Jones heaves it. It hits the top of the backboard. Time runs out. A comeback for the ages for TCU over Texas. Let's take a look at our players.